Welcome to the Endless Knot Podcast. Where the more we know, the more we want to find out. Tracing serendipitous connections through our lives and across disciplines. Hi, I'm Avon. And I'm Mark. And tonight, we're going to talk about Hercules. Hero, Hero song, song and story, story. Hercules, winner of, of ancient, ancient glory. glory. Well, see, now we've got a copyright <laughs> claim on our hands. But there's softness in his eyes. Iron, Iron in, in his, his thighs. thighs. <laughs> Virtue in his heart and fire in every part. <laughs> Oh, everybody who didn't grow up in the 70s has no idea what we're talking about right now. <laughs> we'll come back to this. Um, yes, welcome. We're going to be talking about Hercules tonight, and we'll get into why in a couple of minutes. But first, a couple of things. Just wanted to start off by letting you know that we are going to be participating in a project or a, an event in October called Two Pods a Day. It's a campaign that aims to introduce podcast listeners to two independent podcasts every day. And this time it's for the month of October uh, to give visibility to some of the great indie podcasts that you probably haven't heard of. And this is wider than our Humanities Podcasts group. It's podcasts on all sorts of topics and themes and styles. So if you would like to find out more about this, you can go to twopodsaday.wordpress.com or follow the hashtag two pods a day. That's the letter two, two pods a day on Twitter and Facebook, and just look up two pods a day on various social media groups. And our podcast is going to be featured, which is great. And also there's going to be lots and lots of other episodes by other fantastic podcasters. I listened to a few in advance of the campaign, and I was really impressed with what I heard. So I strongly encourage you to check it out if you're looking for more podcasts to add to your roster and maybe share the hashtag and post if they come across your feed. It would help everybody out. All right, that's really the only feedback I think or follow-up we need to do. So, on to the cocktail? I guess so. <laughs> we got to go quick, you know. Yeah. It's a lot to talk about when you're talking about Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight I have chosen a cocktail that is tangentially related to Hercules. It is the Atlas cocktail. And I'll put a link in the show notes to the recipe. The title of the post is Drinking with Titans, <laughs> the Atlas <laughs> Cocktail. <laughs> and it is triple sec and rum and Angostura bitters and, well, it's supposed to be apple brandy. And we've used crab apple brandy because we have some homemade crab apple brandy and that's what we have. Mm -hmm. So why is it called the Atlas Cocktail? Can you... Do tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Two reasons, probably. The rum that it's supposed to be used is 151 proof. Woo. So... Uh, it's supposed to be quite strong. Right. And the other is the apples, because right. Atlas, as you may or may not know, was a figure from myth. He is a titan, and he's best known for holding up not the earth, as he's often portrayed, but holding up the sky, the mm -hmm. heavens. But where he is is right next to the Garden of the Hesperides, who are these nymphs who live in the farthest west reaches, who guard the tree with golden apples that give everlasting life or beauty or are just good apples, mm -hmm. <laughs> but golden apples. And the reason this is related to Hercules is because one of his labors was to get the apples of the Hesperides. This is the 11th labor, is that right? The ordering can be different, but yeah, I okay. think so. I think, I think so. it's one of the last labors. The apples were guarded by the nymphs, but more importantly by a dragon, essentially a snake dragon. And so he tricked Atlas into getting them for him and then tricked Atlas into taking the sky back on his shoulders and leaving him with that. Now, I always thought that Atlas tricked Hercules into taking the sky, and Hercules tricked him back, wound up him, as it were. I, the way, I mean, it, the way it's told in most Greek myths mm -hmm. is they don't tell you the internal motivation no, of the well, characters. The you never really so, see that. So it's up to the... But my understanding of it has always been that this is one of the times when Heracles is clever yeah. and he knew yeah. all along that he was going to have to trick him back into it. Right. Okay. Um, so he had that That plan. he knew he had mm -hmm. to hold the sky up for Atlas to get the apples because mm -hmm. how else was it going to work? Mm -hmm. And then he does the, oh, uh, I'll, I guess I'll have to keep holding it, but just let me adjust a pad on my neck to keep mm -hmm. me comfortable. And Atlas holds it again and then is stuck with it again. But I don't know. You know, Heracles, as we'll talk about, runs the gamut from stupid brute to right. clever trickster. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is one of his cleverer moments. Yeah. yeah. You know, he could have just killed the snake in a different, mm -hmm. one of his different guises. You would have expected him to just kill the snake. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so shall we try the cocktails? Sure. Cheers. Ooh. Definitely strong. Strong. I didn't use 151 proof rum all, for all of it. Hmm. I used some golden rum, and then I used a little bit of the overproof rum as well. Mm. It's nice, though. I do like that apple brandy we have, the crab apple brandy. Mm. It's got a sort of bitterness to it, but it's very nice. Okay, well, that's a smooth and pleasant cocktail and quite powerful so if we start to degenerate by the end of the <laughs> podcast you'll know why so do you want to explain a little bit about why it occurred to us to talk about hercules and what aspects we're going to talk about today right well i'm currently teaching a course on the ancient world in film and we're right in in class we're right in the middle of a whole bunch of hercules films <laughs> so it is on my mind yeah and i taught that class last year mm -hmm. and also taught a whole bunch of Hercules films. Right. And so I thought we could talk about not just Hercules, not, but specifically Hercules on film. On film. Mm -hmm. And the history of Hercules' portrayal on film. It's not going to be an exhaustive history. There are a lot of movies that have <laughs> Hercules in them. <laughs> We're not going to be able to touch on all of them, but we can kind of talk about some of the issues that we've raised in our classes and other things that don't necessarily fit into the classes right. that we get to talk about. Well, one of the interesting things about Hercules on film is, you know, why did it take them so long to do one? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no sort of golden age of Hollywood Hercules film. There may be some some silent St yeah, films. Yeah, I think there's some strongman films, which like not right. narrative films so much as, as strongman on film in some of the earliest cinematography. But you're right, that's not the same as, no. as a Hercules movie. There's no big Hollywood Hercules, Hercules movie. Hmm. Yeah, that is surprising. I mean, I suppose maybe because they thought it was too hard, but really, I mean, they didn't have to get good effects or whatever. No, and I mean, they were doing big... Elaborate movies. Uh, elaborate yeah. movies based on the ancient world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they certainly could have. Mm -hmm. But the first big movie is the Steve Reeves movie. Yeah, and that's a low-budget Italian production. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. From a genre known sometimes as peplum, mm -hmm. which I guess is a reference to the outfits. The Greek, yeah. The, it's the equivalent of calling them toga films, toga except films, that they're right. Greek films yeah. rather than Roman films. Roman. Uh, or sword and sandal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the spaghetti Western version the like ancient in, in version, the ancient yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. The ancient world version of a spaghetti Western. So, you know, Italian production filmed mm -hmm. in Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, Fairly cheap, but with often, or at least some of the time, American yeah, actors. Yeah, at least American. in the in the lead roles, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't, I, and I don't have an answer for that because I don't really know. A caveat here is that neither of us is really f are film historians mm. or film scholars, so we're going to be talking more about the sort of character of Hercules than mm -hmm. about the history of film. But it's true it, that it is surprising it took so long. But once they started, well, there was a boom in them for a while yeah. anyway. Yeah. So following in the tradition of, the, so the Steve Reeves was uh, 1958, I believe, 57. Mm -hmm. And following that, there were a whole bunch of Italian productions. Yeah, a bunch of other, Ita Hercules Unchained Hercules. is the second one, which yeah. is, people have said it's the better, the better of the of Reeves the... ones anyways, mm -hmm. and, and the best of that series. I haven't actually watched that one. I've only watched the original Hercules. Yeah, me too. And not all of them starring Steve Reeves, so mm -hmm. he he was in a few of them, but various other actors took on the role. Mm -hmm. And that sort of lasted into the mid-60s, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, and then and then it goes on. I mean, there's there's not quite the same boom in them, but there's Hercules things here and there from Seems then on. Seems to be a on. Hercules for every decade, basically. Yeah, at least. <laughs> at least one sort of major Hercules, yeah. some of which are obviously better than others. Um, maybe we can come back to that in a moment. And then some TV shows yeah. and a cartoon, which is the one we were singing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the theme song for the 60s mm -hmm. Hercules cartoon, which is a very bad cartoon, <laughs> but fondly remembered by me. I, we It was played as a rerun show in the 70s and 80s when I mm -hmm. was a kid, which is why I know it. It's worth looking up the 60s Hercules <laughs> TV show to see very bad animation, <laughs> very silly plots, really bad animation, actually. Mm -hmm. But the theme song written by... Sung by Johnny Nash. I'm not sure who yeah, wrote but, it. I guess but... that's not important. But yeah, it's sung by Johnny Nash. And it's this very, it's just an amazing theme song. <laughs> yes. 
So, yeah, there's been Hercules all the way through. And then recently, of course, uh, only a couple of years ago, there were two out in one, one year, year yeah. which is pretty, and two big budget. Two big budget Hollywood productions. Yeah, which is that one was of a the mistake. Reasons. <laughs> yeah, I don't think either of the productions intended that, of no, course. No, no. So, but yes, it didn't, it didn't help. The lesser of those two movies was not helped by that, I don't no. think, at all. So what I sort of wanted to talk about was when you look at all of these movies, so the Steve Reeves movie sort of sets the tone, right? Yeah. That first Hercules movie with Steve Reeves uh, sets a whole bunch of motifs, which maybe we can discuss. And then from there, we get the follow-ups, but then we get the ones we've shown anyway in, yeah. the, in the class, which is not all of them, but it's a good selection of them. Is there a 60s Hercules that we show? Yes. Which one is that? That is Hercules in New York. Oh, yes. That's in the 60s, right? Which I would argue, this is my crazy theory, is actually, in many ways, the closest in characterization to the Hercules of myth. The Hercules figure is. Yes. yes. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. So maybe we should give some background to Hercules in New York, New York okay. because it's perhaps not the well most known. well known. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's a cult hit in a, in a lot of ways. I think it's mostly just known for what it was, which was the first vehicle for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. His first movie. Yeah. And when it was released, his voice was dubbed. Yes. Because it was almost incomprehensible. Yes. And to be honest, it really is. It's it's now on DVD and mm -hmm. you can choose which movie version you want. And we listen to it with his voice. Yeah. And even though I'm used to his accent and, you know, doesn't have really complicated lines or yeah. anything, it's pretty hard it's to understand It's a much thicker him. accent than he has now. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Obviously, yeah. it was he'd mm -hmm. barely been speaking English for very long at all. And it was just very strong. So they dubbed it. And I've never actually listened to it dubbed, but that must be a very weird experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it was put out as the Mr. Universe. And his name was not credited not, as no, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was Arnold Strong, mm -hmm. which obviously is playing on his sort of strong, strong man, man character. character. Yeah. Uh, but it was also a pun on the name of his co-star, co who was Arnold, Arnold Strang. Strang. Strang or Stang? Stang, Stang yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Arnold Strong and Arnold Stang, Stang yeah. yes. His co-star, co -star who is sort of... The sidekick character. Yeah, the sidekick character, who's a, a New York guy, a little short and mousy kind of New York mm. guy. Yeah. A wise guy, but not a physical guy. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I mean, it's a terrible movie. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible movie uh, in all sorts of ways. It's incoherent. It makes no sense. It's badly shot. Mm -hmm. It's got ridiculous effects in it. It's just an opportunity for him to throw things around a lot and be Flex strong. His muscles, yeah. yeah. Take off his clothes for no reason yes. whatsoever. <laughs> but you're right. The characterization of, of Hercules is as a totally self-centered, sensuous, you know, cares only mostly for physical pleasure. Very conceited. Yeah. Very sure of his godhood. Mm -hmm. So he's a god. He's not a mortal. He's mm -hmm. coming down from Olympus to visit New York. This is the premise of the movie is essentially he wants to go visit New York because he wants to have fun. And... Zeus says no, and he goes anyway. Chaos ensues. He becomes a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he's terribly upset when people don't treat him with the respect he thinks he deserves. And he does stuff just for the fun of it, you know? Yeah. He does, he, he gets into trouble and wrestles he, with people yeah. for no good reason. Yeah, he has clear fun in using his strength. Yeah. He just, he likes fighting. And I think all of those things, you're right, are <laughs> absolutely elements of the Heracles of myth. And he's not really heroic. He has a few moments. But like the story is not about him rescuing a damsel in distress no. or righting a wrong or protecting the innocent or oh. anything. The he's only, just in it for fun. Yeah. The only heroic aspect to him, if there is one, is that he makes a friend. Yeah. And he cares about his friend. Mm -hmm. um, I think we could come back to that because the question of friendship and sidekicks. Right. Is, a, is an important one. But you're right. It's just a pity it was in such a <laughs> awful, awful movie. You got to see the, the scenes set on Mount Olympus are <laughs> truly astounding. Yes. Uh, the, the thunderbolt that, yes. Her that Zeus is holding. Metal, <laughs> bent metal bar yeah. in, in the shape of a... Sort of in the shape of a zigzag. Of, yeah. <laughs> it's his terrifying lightning bolt, yeah. And then the 70s, the one we played, which is also a terrible, terrible movie. What's it actually called? It's, it's just called Hercules. I mean, so many of these movies are just called Hercules. Well, this is the Lou Ferrigno yeah. one? It's actually 80, in the just early 80s? Yeah, 83. Yeah, okay. So there's nothing in the 70s, really. And it is just mind-bending. Mm -hmm. It's set in space. 
space, or at least it starts in space with this cosmic creation forces, of creation and... of the world, and these really 80s effects. Yes. And the gods live on the moon. Yeah. And so does some of the other people. Atlantis might be on the moon. I'm not completely clear <laughs> on that. Atlantis is involved, shall we say. Um, and Hercules is so strong that he can throw stuff into, into orbit. Into space, yeah, into orbit. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet at other times he like gets chained to things. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> some problems there. Uh, he's made entirely of light. Yes. Yeah, he's made out of light to balance the powers of evil or something. Women don't wear very much <laughs> in that in that movie. To be fair, neither does he. No, that's true. That's certainly true. Yeah, anyway, it too is a, it's an, all about technology. There's all these mechanical yeah. monsters. So Daedalus is, well, for one thing, a woman female. and an alien, a space alien or yeah. something. But her her creations are these kind of robot things. Mm -hmm, which get made giant and attack Hercules. It's really weird. <laughs> it's a weird movie. And it's also not very good. I think it's better than Hercules in New York, maybe. It was trying to take itself seriously, which is, mm. I don't know if that's good or it's bad. It's a bit of a problem with it, yeah. Whereas Hercules in New York was clearly meant as a spoof. Well, meant to be comedy. Meant to be like, comedy, anyways. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's a spoof exactly. I mean, what was it spoofing? It right. was just a comedy. Well, in some ways, I would argue it's spoofing the the Pepla. A little bit, yeah. Because there is one scene where Hercules uh, is out on a date with a girl in New York, and they come to a movie theater. Yes. And there is a movie poster of one of those, you know. Types of movies, types yeah. Of movies, Hercules movies. And he says, who is that pretending they're me? Yeah, and he gets very upset gets that very that upset. doesn't look like me at all. Oh, and, and then he takes his shirt off and, <laughs> and, flexes, and flexes to show how yes. much better he is yeah, looking yeah. than the guy in the movie theater. <laughs> yes. So in some ways, I think it's it's kind of, you know, doing a run at uh, at that tradition. Right. Yeah, no, that's probably true. That's true. And then in the 90s, we have Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. With Kevin Sorbo. Yeah. And that's a big, long, fairly long running mm -hmm. TV series and very popular and a really big deal. And so there we have an actor mm -hmm. playing the figure of Hercules. All the, the previous ones we've mentioned have been bodybuilder turned actor or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to come back to that in a moment. We've sort of worked through these movies mm -hmm. about who they were and what they're, mm -hmm. why they were chosen. Um, so we have Kevin Sorbo in The Legendary Journeys. Then we have... Disney. Disney. Yeah. That's the next one that I didn't see until reason a few years ago now, but yeah. the people who are younger than us grew mm -hmm. up on. Mm -hmm. So the Disney Hercules, which was very foundational for a lot of people in the same way that horrible TV <laughs> animated one was for me. Right. So they were probably better off than me <laughs> on that. And then there's a mini series that came out in 2012 or something like that. Uh, 2005, I believe. Okay. It's nothing really before that other than the Disney, right? I mean, there may have been, but of, of the ones we've been working with, I think that's nope, what they're No, I think asking. that's it. Yeah. So the mini series has Paul... Paul Telfer, a okay. Scottish actor, actually. As the main, though I guess there's several ages of Hercules that are played by yes. other people. But he's, yeah. he's the grown-up right. one. For the majority of it. And it takes itself pretty seriously, too. It does. And it's not bad. It's also not good, I would say. It's like, well, it's not, you know, it's not, it's certainly not, not great. great. It maybe takes itself a little too seriously, is the it, problem. It takes itself seriously, and it, that's combined with pretty bad effects. With ambitious and bad effects. Yeah. Though it doesn't lean heavily on the the effects. Well, yes and no. When as a main character who's a centaur, and the centaur effect is yes, awful. Yes, the centaur effect is not very good. And the, another main character who's a nymph, and all they've done is painted her face gold. Yes. And that looks weird the mm -hmm. whole way through. So, I mean... It doesn't lean heavily on effects for like fight scenes and stuff. Mm -hmm. No, because all the all the monsters end up being not some of them. Well, some of them do. They, I they do end yeah. up being monsters. They, they end, up being, end up being different, different monsters, monsters than, than they supposedly to be. are. Yeah, but some of them, like um, Kerberos, is is turns out not to be a, a, a dog. Yeah. yeah, and the bull is the Cretan bull is actually a person. A person. But on the other hand, the Nemean lion turns out to be a. A shape changing sphinx. That's true. Yes, yeah. and yeah, okay. there is the three headed hydra. Yeah, and that's a full. And that that effect isn't so bad. Some of the effects aren't too bad, but some of them just are not very good. I think it was a question of budget because I yeah. think the technology existed at the time. That's but... why I say yeah. So it, it, but it was sort of let down by that because yeah. by deciding to put in 
all of, like there are some figures in there that don't need to be half human or don't right, you know right, like they right. could have they didn't have to go all the way because some mm-hmm. of the stuff as you say they rationalize anyway so i think that's one of the things i don't like about it and then there's also it sort of varies in tone between kind of interesting and and then it it had that whole storyline of the clash between H- zeus and hera and the worshippers of zeus and hera and men versus women yeah and exclusivity about the gods and how you can only worship one god and the followers of each god are against each other and they hardly mention any other gods except no. for those two yeah right at the end they're mentioned in passing in hercules's moment of sort of rejecting the gods rejecting the I, no he 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 goes he rejects, all proto-christian he, yeah he i reject the all that is bad about the gods and i love all that i honor only those things that are good and noble about the gods in a sort of hmm. virtuous pagan kind of way, right? right? Where he is groping towards the concept of a true, loving, noble god mm-hmm. as seen through these other gods. And, and and it just doesn't make... The theology of the whole thing is messed up. Yeah. And while that's true of all of these movies, the weight they put on the theology, which is so heavy, it's the driving force between behind the whole plot, makes it great on me quite a lot. So there's that. Then there's the very recent ones. Yeah. So first, The Legend of Hercules, <laughs> mm-hmm. Kellen Lutz. Right. In two, 2014. Mm-hmm. And it's it's okay. It's it's just like, it's it's a well done movie. Yeah. It's well produced. The effects, the effects are, good. are good. Yeah. It's um, tight and the acting is fine and mm-hmm. it's all, I just found it boring. Yeah. It takes itself seriously. It's not funny. Mm-hmm. There's nothing funny about it. It's very grim. Yeah in ways that it doesn't sort of feel like it needs to be, particularly. And it really plays up the the love story. It's a romance. Yeah. In plot. Yeah. And unfortunately, I felt nothing for either of the <laughs> main characters in the mm. romance. I just I wasn't interested in them. I didn't feel they were charismatic at all. Yeah. And I didn't care whether or not they ever got back together or not. Yeah. Like, they were separated yeah. and they're kept apart by cruel forces. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Sh- sure. Be kept apart. I don't care. So that was how it, it fell apart for me. So it wasn't, it's not a ba- an awful movie. It's nothing like the depths of some of these other movies. <laughs> it's just kind of forgettable. And in being that, had it been out by itself, we probably would have been like, finally, there's a good, good. a decent Hercules, Hercules movie. Yep. But instead... It suffered by comparison to also 2014, Hercules starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Which is the star in our firmament of Hercules <laughs> adaptations. Other, I mean, The Legendary Journeys is my other, is other um, is favorite the other of one. those yeah, yeah, of sure. these ones that we're talking about, for sure. Mm-hmm. And we can come back to it. It's a, it's a really interesting and memorable yeah, yeah. <laughs> version, too. But it, the, yeah, so that Hercules with The Rock was just, it was just fun. It was fun, yeah. It was a plain old fun movie. And The Rock is a good actor. Oh, he's a very good actor. And he's magnificent to look at. Like, not, I don't find him particularly sexy because he's just sort of frightening. And he just mm. doesn't look human <laughs> quite in, in his proportions. He's just so extreme. Right. But he's magnificent. Like, you mm. just want to kind of stare at him, mm. as we both did, especially his neck. <laughs> like, it's just, he's just amazing. And, you know, that's what Hercules should be is jaw dropping. Yeah. And he is. And he's funny. And he, like, I cared about him. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, they didn't give it a, it wasn't a main love story, but there was a flashback to a, a tragic event in the past. And I was, you know, genuinely upset about it. Yeah. And his relationships with the various friends he had, I cared about them. I cared mm-hmm. about him when he would sort of be betrayed by someone he trusted and got all upset. I was upset about that. Yeah. So I just thought it was much, yeah. much better done. Yeah. So that's sort of a roundup. I don't want to, <laughs> I guess we've kind of <laughs> talked about that for fair length, just as a setup. Mm-hmm. But let's get back to that idea of who who's played Hercules. Because that's, so the obvious thing is, yes, of that entire list, most of them, not all of them, but most of them were non-actors. And most of them were bodybuilders. The Rock is a wrestler. Yeah. So Reeves was a bodybuilder. The Rock is a wrestler. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lou Ferrigno yeah. was also a, a bodybuilder. Body and um, who else? Now, the others, the Lutz, I don't think so. No. He's an actor, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. He's just an actor. And in fact, that movie doesn't emphasize the physicality of Hercules the same way. Mm-hmm. Only at the very end does he actually really kind of come into that super strength. Yeah. 
it's sort of in a in a moment of um, semi apotheosis of of kind of revelation where he finally accesses that real strength that puts him apart from something. It's almost the only time he does something actually sort of superhuman. Everything else he does, he's just he's a strong guy and he's yeah. a good fighter and things. But it's left very up in the air as to whether he's really that much stronger than everybody mm-hmm. else. But then at the end, he does show that that he is, Mm -hmm. that he can do something. Which is actually true of The Rock, too. Yeah. The way they play it is that he's very strong, but that nothing he does is... Supernatural. Supernatural until the The end. The very end, yeah. When he does something that is just not physically possible for a human. I mean, of course, he does things that are not physically possible for the human all the way through the movie. Well, yes, yes. But (laughs) But so do some of his companions. You know, that's just a sort of trope of action movies. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the miniseries guy is also just a just an actor, just an actor. Yes. and then Kevin Sorbo. So once we move into the eighties, essentially, with the nineties, the nineties, yeah, the nineties, we're into mostly actors yeah. playing him, and that's the trend. But it had been the tradition, and The Rock re- returns to it of yeah. using people who are known as bodybuilder types. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously. That's completely reason. Like that's not surprising. We're not saying no. anything odd. <laughs> you know, Hercules is known for his, yeah. and he's not just a hero. He's the hero who's known for his strength. Yeah. And there are images from the ancient world, and I can maybe even post a couple that show him as the extreme hero. Yeah. As opposed to other heroes who are always usually in Greek culture d- shown as as perfectly proportioned. Yeah, because that's that's the the, the Greek ideal. aesthetic of the male body is. Mm-hmm. All in proportion, not excessive, not excessively muscular or whatever. Yeah. And the heroes and myths sort of they're strong, but other than Hercules, it's not that they're it's not feats of strength exactly. Mm. I mean, they are strong, but so are sort of all of the heroes are strong. Yeah. Right. But Hercules is Heracles, the mm-hmm. Greek name for him, is definitely portrayed as physically distinctive, especially in Roman versions of him but also in greek versions mm. as being like bulky right in a way that is not the human the ideal and i think actually that's an interesting element of it in terms of his greek portrayal he's not ideal the heracles of myth is excessive and a drunkard and mm. uh, has too much sex and you know eats too much and gets too angry and kills a bunch of guests and kills family members and you know, does all these things he shouldn't do, mm. as well as ridding the world of monsters and fighting against, you know, fighting on the behalf of the gods and doing all the good things right. that he does. Now, that's true of all the heroes to some extent, but Hercules by far more than all the other heroes. All the other heroes have their little excessive moments, too. Right. It's part of the sort of balance. But Hercules is extreme. And I think that that's why he's portrayed as not the ideal figure. So it's kind of funny that he then becomes, for obvious reasons, the model for the bodybuilding culture when it starts in the late 19th century. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mid to late 19th century is when the idea of the sort of strong man and the body beautiful and the Atlas bodybuilding really starts to happen. And they look directly to Greek precedent. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's an article I can link to that I I can't paraphrase here, but that's really interesting about some of the um, links between the bodybuilding culture and their explicit Mm. early parallels to like the people who would go around and give shows where they would they would pose in classical poses right right and they would be then the pictures were always taken in classical poses they were trying to look like greek statues right so at first they were trying to look like those proportions but then they started to emphasize you know that the sort of larger and larger proportions and that sort of builds up in the 20th century to the strong man right which is different than the classic Greek right. statue proportions. And so it's interesting that Hercules becomes this sort of at least one vision of the ideal man. Right. When I don't think, when I know that he wasn't in that way, the ideal man to the Greeks mm-hmm. and to the Romans, though the Romans, I think, had less concern about proportion mm-hmm. and more admiration for the, the sheer strength. Mm-hmm. And you see that in the fact that the emperors, for instance, often had themselves portrayed as Heracles, as mm. Hercules, mm. with Commodus and other, they're not always the good emperors so much, <laughs> um, but but they'd like to portray themselves as Hercules either with like a few of his attributes or genuinely as like with the lion skin cloak and the club and everything as Hercules. So they didn't seem to think that he was too excessive. He becomes a more a more um, acceptable figure for mm. the Romans. 
And I mean, that idea of who plays him and what their shape is, because there is, there's a real, there's sort of a commonality between Reeves and Schwarzenegger and Ferrigno and The Rock. Mm -hmm. They're all different. I'm sure aficionados of bodybuilding would be able to tell you how they're different. And uh, I think, you know, they become more and more massive over time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Reeves is massive for his period, but right. But does, if you comparison. put him beside Schwarzenegger, right, or you put him beside The Rock, right. obviously there's no, there's no comparison. But then you compare him to someone like Sorbo. Mm -hmm. Now, as I was saying to you when we were talking about this earlier, if you put Sorbo be beside you know Sorbo when he was doing those mm -hmm. shows, put him beside a, a normal person, yeah, he'd be huge. <laughs> he's quite tall too. Yeah, he's tall and he's strong and yeah. he's muscly. He only looks less so when you compare him to people like mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. and The Rock. You know, it's not like they aren't muscled and and uh, but but there's still a different aesthetic. Mm -hmm. He didn't try to become a bodybuilder, and no. he hadn't spent his life building that physique. Yeah, and they don't emphasize it the same way. No, Sorbo wears a lot of clothes. Yep, compared to all of them except maybe the mini series guy, he also yeah. wears a fair amount of clothes. Though there's you know, he doesn't all the time, but, mm -hmm. but he does. And I can't remember in the other 2014 one. Well, when they show him fighting in the... Uh, yeah, there's all those arena scenes arena, where he's pretty yeah. stripped down. Yeah. That's right. There's other ones where he's sort of in mm -hmm. military armor. Mm -hmm. He doesn't spend his whole time like Reeves does. Yes. Like Reeves spends his whole time in essentially a loincloth. Yeah. yeah. He just never wears anything else. But there's more of a sort of variation. But Sorbo is, wears like pants... And a, a very deep V-necked shirt, yes, which tends to sort of gape open a lot. Yeah, I mean they they take opportunities to show him, you know, stripped down, mm -hmm. but that's not his standard look. No, and I think that kind of brings us to the question of like, what kind of man is Hercules? What sort of figure is he in all these movies, and how does that change? How has it changed over time, and how does that reflect changes in pop culture, changes in society? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I think the the early kind of 50s Hercules, he is the kind of squeaky clean, all-American boy sort of Hero. figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that ties into the what stories do they tell about him? Mm -hmm. You know, in the Reeves story, the, the odd thing about that first Reeves movie is it's hardly a Hercules movie. It's actually the Jason and the Argonauts story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of, there's a couple of um, labors. labors thrown in there, but they're not even labors. They're just things that happened happen to, happen to yeah, him. Yeah. He has <laughs> to wrestle with that tiny the little, lion. yeah, the, 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 the lion that's clearly a puppet half the time yes. and the terrifying bull, which is obviously a very small sort of water buffalo <laughs> <laughs> or buffalo. <laughs> it's, yeah, calf. Um, <laughs> bad scenes. But yeah, that's not that much actual Hercules in mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And that's one. And the Hercules in New York doesn't tell any of the Hercules stories. No. It's completely mm -hmm. unmythological. It's just the setup. And the Lou Ferrigno one, no, I mean, like, it sort of gestures at some of the yeah, stuff. Yeah, he cleans the, the stables. stables. Yeah, and, and he fights various monsters. Mm -hmm which I think some of them, they kind of combine yeah. elements of yeah. various of his labors. And we do have the birth story. So the, the, the element that gets brought up by most of them is the snakes the in snakes. the cradle yeah. and the um, persecution by Hera. Mm -hmm. That's in most of them, but not the Steve Reeves because we don't see Steve the childhood Reeves, no. one. But what you don't have in all of those ones is any of the negative stories of Hercules. No. Any of the things he does wrong. Yeah. Just not there. The miniseries does, yep. but it makes it not his fault. Yes. The, the really important one is the fact that he kills his wife and children. Yeah. Though he doesn't kill his wife in that version. He just kills just the kills children. Just kills his children. That's right. And it's his wife who causes him to do so. Though she was tricked in that too. Well, no, she knew she was giving up her children. Did she? Yeah. Okay. She says to her mother-in-law or aunt or whatever she is, she says but my children and says, oh, you know, you shouldn't be attached mm. to them so much and whatever. Yeah, she knows she's given okay. up her children, but she's forced into it. Mm -hmm. But still, um, yeah, she she sends her children in to be slain by him unknowingly. So they make it. So they he, drug he, him. So, and... so he, it happens, but they make it not his fault. Yeah. And he doesn't kill her. And the... In the Sorbo one, it's... It's, it's Hera who Hera kills directly. them. Hera kills them directly. And he is not at all at fault. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing he could have done, and in no way, it's it not even fireball. accidentally his fault. She sends a fireball and just kills them in their beds. Yeah. 
And so he's not at all at fault, though he feels guilty because it was because they knew him. But yeah. And then he has this revenge plot against Hera. Mm hmm. Is the driving force, but he doesn't do it. And while elements of the show kind of get a little darker later on, basically the Kevin Sarbo Hercules is a good guy through and through and yeah. through. Yeah, he's definitely the squeaky clean. And he, but he's hero. he's not just squeaky clean. He's kind, yes. and thoughtful, big and hearted, big and... hearted, and and sweet, and cares about equality among everyone. Like Reeves is the gentle the 50s gentleman yeah. but you know he thinks women are arm candy and to mm -hmm. be protected he doesn't have any respect for them as people right <laughs> right um kevin sorbo is your sen sensitive new age guy he thinks women are just as important as men and and doesn't and wants to make sure that slaves aren't enslaved and you know goes around helping the protecting the needy and mm -hmm respecting all of the values of others and you know doing all those things that the 90s wanted us to do politically correct in every way he could be yeah it, as far as the 90s is able to be of course there's cringy moments yes, yes. <laughs> but but you know that's the, the character of him so mm -hmm. he's more than just squeaky clean he's he's the perfect guy yeah then and then the other 2014 one the lutz one there's no killing of his wife and children is there i can't even remember that story is so boring yeah <laughs> Don't even remember. He's accused of something. He's accused yeah, of killing. Yeah, because he is sent away. Yeah. What? What is it? I can't remember now. Oh, it's because he tries to he, tr he tries to kidnap his his bride. He tries oh, to run bride. away with. That's it. right. It's the girl. It's the girl who the the daughter of Atlantis or whatever mm. of Crete. No, she's the daughter of Crete. The daughter. She's the Cretan princess. She's mm. the daughter of the king of Crete, who's in love with him. They've grown up as children together and they love each other. And so they try to, but then she's promised to his brother. And so they try to flee and he's captured. And that's why mm -hmm. he's sent away. Yeah. So he doesn't kill anybody. No. And he doesn't do anything bad, particularly. I mean, he kills people, but he doesn't kill people he shouldn't he kill. Yeah. He doesn't murder people. He... <laughs> no. And uh, so we don't have the, the sort of bad stuff there. But, and, in the, and then in the rock one. He thinks he, thinks he, he killed them. Mm -hmm. He's again. He's sort of like it's sort of like the uh, the mi miniseries one. Yeah. He's sort of drugged or or something confused and yeah, they he's drugged and and he has only a hazy memory of it. And he wakes up with his family torn to bits yeah. around him, and then it turns out in the end uh, they were killed by dogs, dogs, wolves, wolves. Yeah, yeah. And he has this hazy memory of a three headed dog, mm -hmm. um, which turns out to be three, three wolves. Dog, yeah. Three wolves. Yeah, yeah. So he so they they tackle that part of the story but he doesn't do it mm -hmm. he he is exonerated in the end he didn't do it he's guilty he feels guilt feels for guilty. it but he isn't and then of course the disney hercules doesn't <laughs> even mention it no, and in the, fact it doesn't yeah <laughs> it, it, in fact he ends up with the love story yeah. that's in disney is is with the wife so the other thing is that hercules in all the versions has multiple wives yeah in, in the, all the myths has multiple wives and that's not treated in any of these stories Except in the mini series where he has the wife Megara that yeah. he's supposed to kill and doesn't, and the wife Deanira, who's the one who ends up killing him, but that's not talked about. Yeah. <laughs> and in the Disney movie, the woman he ends up with that he gives up everything for supposedly is the one that he kills is Meg Megara, yeah. yeah, and that's the one who he kills with his children. And when so I tell if there was a sequel. I know the sequel would be him murdering them all in a jealous in a in a fit of madness sent by Hera, his stepmother. Except in the movie, it's his actual mother. So I mean, obviously, the Disney transforms a bunch of stuff. Yeah. All the other versions basically have a, a jealous Hera. Yeah. I think the Disney's the only one that if they have a if they have gods at all. Yeah. Um, Disney's the only one that makes them a happy nuclear family. Yeah. yeah well, they couldn't have uh, you know they couldn't have adultery. adultery. You don't think they could start the kids' movie off with? Adultery, semi-rape, <laughs> attempted murder of a... Well, they do have the attempted murder of the baby. That's true. Um, yeah. And... and uh, <laughs> No? You don't think so? Uh, you don't think somehow, that, that's a Disney that movie? <laughs> yeah. So and then they devise this whole um, different antagonist and they make Hades yep. the antagonist. Who's... Hades isn't involved in any Hercules stories, just mm. for the record. I mean, he goes to the underworld a few times, but Hades is not his antagonist ever. Even when he goes to the underworld, Hades doesn't stop him. Yeah. There's no fight with Hades. There's the, what is it, that, that figure of death? Thanos? Thanatos. 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 Yeah, yeah. He, he has to wrestle with wrestle, Thanatos, yeah. but that's not Hades. That's not Hades. It's just yeah. the personification of death. So, you know, making Hades into the bad guy is just another one of these pseudo-Christianizings of, right. of Greek myth. 
I mean, Hera is an actual bad guy yeah. in the stories, even if she's not a, a devil figure mm-hmm. quite the way that she's sometimes turned into, but it's fair enough. But the Hades thing is just ridiculous. <laughs> I know that the, the Disney Hercules is a good movie. Yes. But it does still kind of drive me mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. It's not it's not inaccuracies that bother me so much as the sort of complete betrayal of everything that makes Hercules Hercules. Mm. Because the movie's main point, the Disney's movie's main point is that what really makes you a hero is your heart. And it also completely fails utterly to follow that through. Because why is not everybody else not a hero then? Everybody else, Megara's got just as much heart as he does. Everybody else has got just as much heart as he does. But they're also just, they're and not heroes. it wasn't heroes. a truly selfless act. He res- the person yeah. he rescues is the, the one, the one he's, he's in love with. with. Yeah, it totally doesn't make sense. Any- and what annoys me about that is just like, First of all, as the movie makes quite plain, you have to be born of a god because <laughs> nobody else gets the chance to prove themselves a hero like he does. And anyway, and just as a, you know, what makes a hero for the Greeks is so very much not that. Mm. that it just just drives me nuts every time. <laughs> but that's kind of the, the core, isn't it? What kind of hero is Hercules mm-hmm. in all of these movies? Mm-hmm. What makes him a hero? And so the more modern movies, the last two anyway... And the movie and the miniseries. Yeah. They have the the damaged hero. Yeah. Yeah. Not actually an anti-hero. No. But someone who looks like he might be an anti-hero for at least part of the movie. Mm. So The Rock starts off... As a mercenary. Yeah. We're, we're given to understand that he uses... He's created this legend of Hercules out of pure cynicism, just as a ploy mm-hmm. to make people scared of him and to make people hire them. Mm-hmm. And he tries to pass himself off as not caring about anything for money, except money. So this is a very familiar trope, too. The guy who's hard as nails and all he cares about is money, but it becomes clear after a while that actually underneath that all, he's got a heart of gold and he really does care and he will give up money just for friends and he has this band of loyal followers that he'll actually give up anything for. Right. All of that. So he's not an anti-hero, but he is damaged. Yeah. He's hurt, traumatized by the... The death of his, the death of his family, family. The, what he thinks was a murder. So he thinks he's a bad guy, mm-hmm. but he's not. And there has to be all these sort of complicated moral decisions he has to make along the way, right? About who to trust and yeah. who's betraying him and things like that. And the other one too, there's the one, you know, he has to go off and he ends up being a, in exile and fighting as a gladiator in ancient Greece. It's not really clear. I don't <laughs> understand that. I mean, the historicity. Sort of fight club. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. I mean, both of those movies, I will say that the strike against both of them, this is true of the Rock one too. I wish they just left it at a mythical time. Yeah, yeah. it's It should be fantasy. It should just be a fantasy time. That's fine. But both of them give a date yeah. and a place and they don't make any sense. The Rock one in particular is really weird. Yeah, this is like they make in it Roman fo- times or something. No, it's, it's, it's Hellenistic. They make it, fourth Hellenistic. Se- they make it fourth century BC. So post-classical era. Yeah. Which is a not an unreasonable time for mercenaries. That's mm-hmm. a naturally very sensible time for mercenaries. But absolutely none of the architecture or fighting styles or anything makes any sense. They also suggest that he invented the phalanx <laughs> fighting style, which is a couple, at least a century to two centuries, well, be, three centuries maybe late. Mm. Like, And none of that would matter if they just said ancient Greece. Yeah. Right? But as it is, you're like, wait, how's this fourth century? Don't they know who Hercules is? Like, there's been myths about him for a thousand years by now? Like, what is your problem? You know, it doesn't, by by making it a specific time, it suddenly doesn't make any sense. Whereas if they just said ancient Greece, sure, fine. And same with the other one. I don't remember what the specifics are, but they give some kind of specific timing. And it's like, well, why? Whereas the miniseries is yeah, happily, completely fantasy, said. They yeah. even say in a time yeah. before time or something like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. In a time before history. And, uh, and same with the, the Kevin Sorbo is it's set in a kind of fantasy world. Yeah, where nothing makes any sense. Yeah. And there are Roman, later on, Julius Caesar's involved. and Yeah, they they break all the, the sort of... Yeah, every... Everything is contemporaneous somehow. Yeah, every piece of logic is just gone. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. By, by 20 minutes into the first episode, you realize that nothing makes any sense in yeah. terms of location, time, historical authenticity. And then, then you're able to just give up on it and not yeah. worry about it. And I think that was my, and I, the Rock one in particular should have just done that. Yeah, yeah. I, I really don't understand why they didn't, even though they were trying to make it kind of a euhemerizing, like mm. he's a real person. Yeah, 
that would have all been fine. And they could have, and then it could have been the story then lived on and became greater than it was. And yeah. it could have turned into the story of Hercules. Totally makes sense. Yeah. You just have to ignore the date. Yeah. But they give you a date. <laughs> Why do they do that? But it is interesting to see how these heroes change. And it, I think it reflects, you know, what we're willing to accept or believe in as a hero, what we think the concept of heroes. And none of these heroes match the ancient definition of a hero. And they certainly none of them match the ancient conception of Hercules. Mm -hmm. They just don't. Mm -hmm. As you said, except for Hercules from, in, <laughs> in New York. York. <laughs> Which oddly is not set in the ancient world. <laughs> no, and doesn't make him a hero in yeah. a contemporary, in a modern sense. In a modern sense, sense yeah. He isn't, he's the protagonist, but not a hero. Yeah. And that's the key. I mean, I understand why all these movies do this. We mm -hmm. have a very strong vision of what our heroes have to be, but but they've also kind of created it. Mm -hmm. You know, they were in, they're important to create in it. That Reeves movie, you know, set up a bunch of motifs, and it's interesting to see how they keep coming back. Yeah, one in particular: Hercules and chains. Hercules and chains, using those chains as a weapon, as a weapon, and to bring down a building. Yeah, though no, he doesn't always in, in he doesn't all of them always bring do down a building, but in a chains, good number but, of them. Yeah. And a whole bunch of them also have final fight scenes on I mean, the build on the stairs of yes, a building, building. Yeah. with columns yeah. that he then uses as chains or, or in just, some other way or just tears with his down. Hands. Yeah. yeah. To uh, you know to to sort of defeat his enemy. Yeah. Or a fight scene on the you know, like some very var variation of that. And it was amazing how how many of those movies did that. Well, and even Hercules in New York, he yeah. doesn't have used chains but he uses his strength to push over these giant, I think they look like paper rolls. Uh, yeah, newspaper they're in some sort of um, warehouse, in I a guess. warehouse. He pushes over yeah. a bunch of heavy stuff in the warehouse to knock down the bad guys. Yeah, who are also wrestlers. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and gangsters. Yeah, but no, but they've clearly got some wrestler actors. Yeah. They aren't at, I don't know if they're even wrestlers, but the actors who play it are clearly, yeah. you know, bodybuilders too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, exactly. So they still, they use those motifs, and um, and that's even in the Hercules, the Disney Hercules. Not quite the same way. They don't have him in chains because it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But they do have him knocking down the pillars right at the beginning. Oh yeah, right. You know, that's true. Um, with his great strength. So I, I almost think that's a a nod, a nod to it. Yeah, a knowing nod to that that scene. It's funny how strong that first movie's influence has mm -hmm. been. And and you can't be Hercules if you don't do those do things. Those th <laughs> and it's, it's, pulling up a tree. Pulling up a tree by its roots. Hap happens yeah. in a few of them. Yeah. yeah. I'd be it? interested, actually, you know, because the Kevin Sorbo mo one is so long drawn out, I haven't sat down and rewatched the whole series. Mm -hmm. And I'd be interested to know if they ever do those scenes. I mm -hmm. wouldn't be at all surprised, mm -hmm. but they're probably scattered through different episodes, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they have. I mean, they certainly have not knocking down buildings and stuff. But yeah, yeah but whether they have those kinds of callbacks to mm -hmm. the movie. And I presume in all of the movies, it's intentional. But I guess so, yeah. Because it, it can't be just coincidental, but it's... Yeah, that's because they're not getting it from the myth. No, because he doesn't do that ever yeah. in the myth. No, no, that, that whole scene, because that whole scene in the Reeves movie has nothing to do with the Hercules myth. It's part of the love story, and it, mm -hmm. it's just completely made up. Yeah. And I guess the last question is just, you know, you asked, you started off by asking why did it take them so long and the converse of that is, why do we keep getting Hercules? Yeah. You know, yeah. why has he continued to be so interesting? Yes, in some ways, that's just a silly question. He's a big name. He's a big name. He was massively interesting to the ancient world. Why wouldn't he? And they told a whole bunch of fun stories. Mm -hmm. Though I always think that the funny thing is... They don't use all the good they stories. They don't use the good stories. I mean, some of them, they, they often at least nod to the labors. Yeah. And of course, those are his most famous stories. But there's so many other stories. And they also, they just, like, none of the movies has been, here's the story of the labors. Mm -hmm. Like, well, the, the miniseries was a little bit like that, of that. Yeah, because he had to do the he labors. He had to do yeah, the labors. He, he was specifically labors, sent yeah. on the labors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just had a lot of other stuff too. But yeah, no, it was much more sort of the life of Hercules. Mm -hmm. It's probably the closest to doing that. In terms of it that, just yeah. introduced a whole bunch of other weird stuff to do with plotting women, women plotting against yeah. men and yeah. being horrible, scheming, conniving children killers. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that part of it <laughs> at all. But yeah, it just seems to me that there's so, you know, it's it's part of what frustrates me about movies about the ancient world in general, actually. They pick up on them because they're well-known and they have such great stories. And then 90% of the time, they don't tell the good stories. They tell either the same stories over and over again, mm -hmm. or the boring stories, or they just make up entirely new stories that are nowhere near as good. 
in my mind, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. the original stories. Why not have Heracles and the Hes- going to the Hesperides? None of them ever make him go to the Hesperides. No, no. Why not have him go get the cattle of Geryon when he has to ride in the cup of the sun? Well, because those things are kind of hard <laughs> to realize kinda, on they're, film. They're very fan- like, how fantasy. How do you hold up the sky? Yeah, yeah they're very fantasy, and yeah. the, the, that's hard. But, you know, other stuff about, like, when he goes and attacks Troy and, yeah, and right. besieges Troy or... When he goes to the underworld, I mean that's yeah, the that story you could, could do. do. Yeah. The the Percy Jackson stories mm-hmm. did fine with mm-hmm. going to the underworld. You could do the going to the underworld to get um, Kerberos, but also when he goes to the underworld, to the the fascinating story where he goes to the underworld to rescue, um, to bring back the woman who has agreed to die on behalf of her husband so that he can not he can be immortal. Mm. Um, it's Alcestis is a Greek tragedy about it, and uh, he comes to visit his friend the king, and it turns out. They're all in mourning because of this wife who has faithfully been willing to give herself up. Right. And so she's died. So he goes to the, that's where he wrestles Thanatos. That's where he wrestles right. death. And then he goes to the underworld and brings her back. And on the way, he rescues Theseus. But I mean, you don't have to leave, put that one in if you don't. <laughs> but like, that's a, that's a fascinating story. And it's got all sorts of interesting elements to it. Mm-hmm. But no, nobody ever tells that story because it isn't a lion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they all have the lion in there somewhere. Well. It's in some ways easy to film a lion. lion. Though it turns out not as easy as you'd think, judging by the various versions and yeah. their problems. So I got to say the um, the rock version, version of the lion was yeah. pretty cool. The mini series, no, it's the other two, 2014 one. Their lion was pretty good too. Right. Yes, that's yeah, right. Their yeah, lion yeah. was. It was not as ex- extreme yeah. as the rocks one, but it was yeah. a pretty good lion. Yeah. But then that was the only element of the labors at all no they, and it wasn't even a labor he they, they he were just, just walking and they came across a lion and, and he killed it, it. yeah <laughs> maybe the last thing i uh, just because we forgot to mention it is that whole thing about friends and sidekicks sidekicks right and i do think that's interesting because hercules does have sidekicks in some stories yeah doesn't in most of them but he has it in some of them and the motif of a hero and a male companion mm-hmm. is a really long standing heroic motif. Yeah. And that is picked up in almost all of these movies. They mm-hmm. have one or more companions. Mm-hmm. And Hercules' Legendary Journeys has a, has a, has a, a male sidekick. Yeah. And the other aspect, I didn't want to talk forever and ever and ever, but that we talked about before is how the interesting thing is all of the bodybuilder ones in particular mm. and those older movies, how they're so clearly, I think, you you talked about how they were objectifying the male body. Yes, yeah, and this this goes back to some film theory mm-hmm. that you know there was one scholar, I think her name was Mulvey, who basically wrote, I think, quite rightly about how, in terms of how the body is uh, visualized on screen, mm-hmm. it's di- divided along gender lines: the male active male gaze and the passive female object. Right. And then how those Peplum movies, and in particular the Hercules movies in particular, mm-hmm. present us with a male body to yeah. gaze at. And some, yeah, as some as later as scholars object. basically argued that's mostly true, but there are some circumstances in which the male can be the object of the gaze. And it's usually in, you know, in situations like boxing, boxers mm-hmm. or something like that, male athleticism. athleticism. Yeah. And so I think that that the those early Hercules movies fit into that. Mm-hmm. that but what model. I but what I would argue is that I think that's true, and I think that they are to some extent. The gaze is open to women to look at, but I would argue that they are indeed objects. But the gaze is still the male gaze. It could be still the male gaze. I yeah. think that those movies are places where explicitly or not, or intentionally or unintentionally, they are extremely homoerotic, where you've got a male body mm-hmm. that is on screen for the male audience and the male gaze to look at mm-hmm. and to, to enjoy mm-hmm. in a way that they're not normally ab- able or allowed in those older movies in particular to mm-hmm. enjoy. And they can enjoy it in part as an identification like wanting to be like him. Mm -hmm. But also in the Reeves movie, it's really clear. There's that whole scene, there's multiple scenes, but in particular that one scene where all the younger men are Mm -hmm. training athletically and Hercules is adored by them all and they all come up and they want to be around him. And there's that one young boy in particular who Mm -hmm. just, he barely, he almost drapes himself over Hercules. He's so Mm -hmm. enamored of him. And it's very clear that there's a like, they don't make it sexual, but they make it, those men do not care about women. Right. They are not performing for women. Right. Though we do get some women sitting in the sidelines towards mm-hmm. the end of that scene. They are men performing for other men. Yeah. They're stripped yeah. down and they're active and they are performing for the admiration of other men yeah. on screen. Mm-hmm. And then the audience too is mm-hmm. men 
watching them perform for their admiration of men. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's a, a an important element of those movies and one of the reasons they were popular. They always, and that's why I think they always give him a love interest. Right. So that it's nice and straight, very clearly straight. But the love interest is really not important. No, yeah. And rarely as nude as he is, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's about his body, not hers, mm-hmm. in those movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the Lou Frigno one, that's not quite true. He's very naked and many she's are very naked as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's the 80s, everybody's naked. And then I would argue, of them all, Kevin Sorbo's is the one who is more clearly meant to be attractive to women, I think. Right. But there's still the strong bond. The, between the, the two men. Male homosociality, yeah. that is, yeah. the, the bonds between men. And the Hercules in New York. I mean, the one thing about that movie, it was a deeply flawed movie, <laughs> but the one thing about that movie that did make me sort of tear up a little bit and how sweet it is, is when Hercules goes back to Mount Olympus and he leaves his friend, who was, you know, a nobody, some schlub somewhere, yeah. who was made some, who kind of became somebody because he was Hercules' friend and is genuinely heartbroken that his friend has disappeared. Yeah. And then there's this scene where Hercules' voice comes, comes through the on video the radio, on the radio and talks to him and says, I will always be your friend. Just think of me when you need me and I will be there. And yeah, that's whenever you thing. think. And, and it was really touching mm-hmm. and it was real friendship. There was no scene in which he said anything about to the woman that he'd been with. No. Who I think was always still engaged to that to other, other guy. To that other guy, yeah. And there's no wrap up with that. Uh, uh, yeah. Immediately after the, the climactic battle scene, you never see her again. She yeah. just disappears. Yeah, she's not important. And he never really, like he likes going around town with her on his arm and stuff, but we never seemed to, but she also sits and talks about him with her boyfriend. Yeah. Or who doesn't, anyway, it's a very weird, it's an incoherent <laughs> movie. But the point is the actual relationship that seems to be at matter in that movie yeah, is, this, is the, the friendship. Yeah. And it's the only one that's actually wrapped up in any way. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's also true to mm-hmm. the Hercules character and to the sort of heroic narrative. Yeah. And you see that in all of these movies, the, mm-hmm. the strong bonds between Hercules and other men. Right. Which transcend Except in the miniseries where it's the relationship with a woman is the most important. But right. in most of them, they transcend the relationships with women. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that's part of the appeal, too, of mm-hmm. the Hercules. It's been perhaps for a while it was a closeted. But, you know, it, I don't even mean that it was just, a, a, you know, I think they were focal points for gay gays. But I think even more than that, for a wider swath of people, of men, who, are, who were in the 50s and 60s and 70s, not allowed... To have sort of the homosociality because it was forbidden. You had to be only like boys and girls and that's right. it. You couldn't just have that kind of male friendship and male relationships. Right. That of that strength. That's a massive oversimplification. But you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it was a it, it, it the story allows for a certain kind of right. element that other stories don't allow for. Right. Because you're allowed to have Hercules with hardly any clothes on because that's part <laughs> of the myth. And you're allowed to have him with men around because that's part of the myth and mm-hmm. so it sort of allows it so i guess our, our final takeaway from all of this is that uh the film that is truest to the the character of the ancient greek heracles is schwarzenegger but it's a terrible movie so watch the rock yep <laughs> i endorse that message <laughs> all right well that's enough good night <laughs> For more information on this podcast, check out our website, www.alliterative.net, where you can find links to the videos, blog posts, sources, and credits, and all our contact info. And please check out our Patreon, where you can pledge to support this show and our video project. You can go directly to the videos at youtube.com slash alliterative. Our email is on the website, but the easiest way to get in touch with us is Twitter. I'm at Avensarah, A-V-E-N-S-A-R-A-H. And I'm at alliterative keep up with the podcast, subscribe on your favorite podcast app or to the feed on the website. And if you've enjoyed it, consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. It helps us a lot. We'll be back soon with more musings about the connections around us. Thanks for listening. Bye.